So thank you, first of all, for um, giving me the opportunity yes. to speak. I'm um, uh, Stephanie, a postdoctoral um, fellow in Wayne Lenz's lab at Boston Children's Hospital. And we're interested in um, sphingolipid structure function. And um, OK, my screen is not moving. Just try with the arrow key, maybe. I am. Oh, now? Did it work? Yep. Okay. So if we think of lipid, uh, lipid structure, there's thousands of different lipid species within um, a cell. And of course, a lot of um, variation stems from the head group um, of a lipid species, but then there's also a tremendous variety of acyl chain structures that can attach can be attached to these lipids. And this is what we're interested in. So how does um, the length of an acyl chain or the degree of saturation or the combination between two affect a lipid's behavior and a lipid cellular function? And to understand um, or to And to understand um, and uh, study these um, structure function behaviors, we use um, a glycosphingolipid as our model um, structure, glycosphingolipid GM1. And you can see GM1 depicted here on the screen. It has a large um, oligosaccharide head group. Um, this oligosaccharide head group will trap the lipid in the outer membrane um, bilayer, so that renders the lipid dependent um, on vesicular trafficking to reach its subcellular destination. So there's no flip-flop um, for GM1. Interestingly as well, for, um, for it to be a, a good model um, species is that um, the sphingosine chain um, of GM1, which is depicted here in black, is usually rather invariant. It's either the 18, so 18 or 20 hydrocarbons in length. But then um, there's a large variety of different fatty acids that can be attached um, to this um, sphingosine chain. And uh, it ranges between um, 14 hydrocarbons in length to 26, 28. And even though there is some um, usually in cells a pre three or four predominant species that are um, that constitute most of the glycosphingo or most of the GM1 species. Um, you can find all of the other variations at very minor um, contributions as well in the cell. And um, the fatty acid can either be saturated or unsaturated. And um, one point that I would like to mention here is the unsaturation um, within the fatty acid in um, glycosphingolipids is not um, fixed. So if you look at GM1C181 here, um, the cis double bond is positioned at delta 9. But then um, the acyl chain is elongated um, at the carboxy terminus, and that moves the double bond further um, away from the amide bond. So in, in the case of C22, for example, um, the double bond is positioned at delta 13. If you move um, two hydrocarbons longer, 24, it's positioned at delta 15 and so on. So if we want to study um, glycosphingolipids in cells, um, how uh, do we do this? And um, we did synthesize um, a library of different GM1 structures. And um, the, we first started to um, synthesize GM1 by attaching um, a, um, a fatty acid of choice. And you can see here the, uh, the constitution of our uh, library. So these are the different fatty acid structures that we have. Um, attached. And then to visualize the lipid, we make use of the sialic acid um, in the head group of uh, GM1. And um, you can attach, in this case here, I show you a lincopeptide. Um, that lincopeptide carries, for example, a biotin handle and the fluorophore. But it's also possible to directly attach um, the fluorophore or the biotin without the lincopeptide. Um, and as a first um, test of their um, behavior within um, their overall biophysical behavior, we chose an in vitro system um, using giant plasma membrane vesicles. These are vesicles that are forcibly bodied off um, the plasma membrane. So they retain the compositional diversity of the plasma membrane. But then um, because there's no structuring actin uh, cytoskeleton anymore in these um, vesicles, the uh, membrane spontaneously phase separates into the liquid ordered and liquid disordered phase. 
and using a face marker, you can then determine the in vitro behavior and face preference um, of your uh, molecule of choice, in this case, the GM1 library. And you can see here from the quantification, if we look at all of the um, lipid species that we generated, GM1 species we generated, that in vitro, it seems that the presence, just the presence of a cis double bond or absence of the cis double bond um, decisively determines uh, the phase preference. If we look at GM1C12, for example, 12, 12, 1, for example, here, um, there's a cis double bond in this molecule and um, prefers the liquid um, disordered phase, but then GM1C12 uh, saturated uh, prefers the liquid ordered phase and um, irrespective of the length. More interestingly, though, is what happens to these um, GM1 species in the cell. So we can load this fluorescent GM1 species into the plasma membrane of cells and then uh, visualize their subcellular trafficking. And the first organelle that we looked at intracellularly is um, the sorting endosome, which is a basically a sorting hub for cargo that um, comes in from the plasma membrane and then has to be um, sorted into the different subcellular pathways. So cargo destined for um, recycling, for example, is pulled into narrow tubules that are um, but, uh, pulled off the sorting endosome and then um, recycled back to the plasma membrane. Similarly, there is um, uh, tubules that serve the retrocate pathway. And if we look at polarized um, epithelial cells, for example, we also have tubules that are pulled that serve the transcytotic pathway, which links the um, apical and basolateral membranes. But then um, cargo, which is destined for degradation, remains in the vesicular part of the sorting endosome and then matures with the endosome to finally fuse um, and be degraded in the lysosome. We can visualize those sorting endosomal tubules using, using um, canonical markers, such as, for example, transferrin. And you can see um, two GM1 species um, in red, GM1C18-1 on the top and GM1C18-0 on the bottom. GM1C18-1 can nicely enter those recycling endosomal tubules, co-localizing to transferrin, which is depicted in blue. But then if you look at GM1C18-0, same length, but lacks the unsaturation, um, you can see that this molecule is trapped within the vesicle and cannot escape into the narrow um, recycling endosome tubules. It becomes a little more complicated then, because if you just have a look at GM1C26-1, so it has a cis double bond, but positioned very low, this molecule also is trapped within the vesicular body of the endosome and cannot escape into recycling endosomal tubules. So there seems to be a difference between in vitro and in vitro behavior. Similar is true for GM1C24-1, for example. You can the quantification down here can also not enter recycling endosomal tubules. But then GM1C12 here, saturated but short, nicely co-localizes to recycling endosomal tubules. So it seems that in a cell, it's not as simple as just the presence or uh, the absence of a cis double bond that determines the subcellular behavior. To verify this, um, we wanted to look more quantitatively at the different um, pathways. And we started looking at the recycling pathway with the idea in mind that if a lipid can enter those tubules, um, that lipid should also recycle back to the plasma membrane. And for this, we use um, our biotin handle, um, quantifying with a fluorescent streptavidin or avidin probe how much lipid is um, recycling back to the plasma membrane. And this can be done by facts. And again, just exemplarily, uh, I'll show you the data for GM1C18-0, which is here in turquoise, or GM1C18-1 in magenta. If both lipids are, are loaded into the plasma membrane at equal amounts, but then if those lipids are trafficked for about three hours, you can see that GM1C18-0 in turquoise, again, is depleted of the plasma membrane, while GM1C18-1, which entered recycling endosomal tubules, um, is still present at a higher amount. And here um, on the right, you saw the quantification. We can do this for the whole um, library again, and um, it correlated with what we saw in um, in our uh, microscopy um, approach that 
lipids or GM1 species that entered recycling endosomal tubules recycle back to the plasma membrane, such as, for example, GM1C12. Um, GM1 species that couldn't enter recycling endosomal tubules, GM1C24-1, GM1C24-0, GM1C26-1, um, are slowly depleted of the plasma. We get similar, uh, uh, a similar approach we can take um, to study another pathway, um, the retrograde pathway. And here we make use of um, a split GFP reporter system where um, GFP is split into two halves. And you can express a non-fluorescent version in uh, your organelle of choice, in our case, the ER, and fuse the remaining part to um, your molecule of choice, in our case, um, cola toxin B subunit, which binds um, GM1 as its receptor. Um, you will receive fluorescent, uh, fluorescence when those two um, molecules meet and um, can reconstitute the GFP molecule. So in a, G a GM1 negative cell line, if we only offer um, GM1 to 18-0 as receptor for CTB, and you can see that at various different concentrations, there is no GFP fluorescence, even after seven hours of incubation. However, if you add GM1C18-1 as the sole receptor, you can see that this molecule, uh, GM1 species, efficiently traffics the CTB subunit back from the plasma membrane to the ER. So what we find intracellularly, um, it seems, is um, that not only the length, but also the position of the cis double bond um, determine the subcellular trafficking of GM1 species. And we determined um, a motif within the A-cell chain that we termed the C14 motif that depicts a stretch of minimally C14 saturated hydrocarbons from this amide linkage that is responsible for um, trafficking and sorting GM1 species into the degradative pathway. If this motif is disrupted by the presence of a cis double bond, for example, such as in GM1C16-1 where it's a delta-9, the lipid traffics with built membrane flow into all of the different cell subcellular pathways that we analyzed. So, um, of course, that um, raised the question if this um, sorting into the degradative pathway might be um, dependent on cholesterol. And if we look at um, cholesterol depleted cells, um, you can see GM1 C18 O in green. Under steady state conditions, um, GM1 C18 O is trapped again in the vesicular body of the endosome. It cannot enter recycling endosomal tubules. But then using various different ways of cholesterol depletion, what we can see is that under cholesterol depleted condition, these molecules, uh, GM1 C18 O now can enter recycling endosomal tubules. And this correlates um, with the lipid recycling rate. So what you can see here is that for lipids that do not harbor the C14 star motif, C12O, C14O, there's no difference between um, recycling rates for cells that are treated or not treated with cholesterol. But then you can increase the recycling rates for lipids that carry the C14 motif, such as GM1C16, 18O, 24O, and 26O. But how about um, yeah, their plasma membrane behavior? And um, is this um, sorting effect um, dependent on their nanodomain um, formation? So um, we looked at uh, plasma membrane nanodomain um, formation using two different techniques. One is um, homofret. And you can um, see here in this first panel, um, Homophred, um, you see clustering of your lipids will correlate with low anisotropy. And for GM1C16O, which carries a C14 motif, you can see that you have a significantly um, lower anisotropy values than for GM1C16-1 that does not carry the C14 motif. And this clustering is um, cholesterol dependent. Um, again, GM1C16-1, which carries the C14 motif, if there is a cholesterol depletion, you can raise anisotropy levels, which correlates with a loss of um, clustering. Um, but GM1C16-1 in gray is not affected by this um, cholesterol depletion to this extent. If we look at the plasma membrane using super-resolution microscopy to 
as D storm. We can also see that if we cluster GM1 C16 O on the top panel, um, it um, recruits other um, GPI anchored proteins, such as, for example, CD59. But if we do the same using GM1 C16 1 that does not have this um, C14 motif, there is no um, uh, aggregation of other plasma membrane components into these domains. And then as a home method, uh, what we find is that um, in the cell, as well as in the plasma membrane, uh, a C14 motif within the acyl chain of um, GM1 determines um, their plasma membrane behavior, as well as their subcellular trafficking, presumably by um, the formation of nanodomains. GM1 species that lack um, the C14 motif within their fatty acid can traffic by bulk membrane flow into each of the um, subcellular uh, yeah, uh, trafficking pathways. And with this, I would like to end and um, thank uh, uh, you for your attention and um, also for, again, the opportunity to present my work here. Um, my um, laboratory, and uh, especially Wayne Lenzer, who is my supervisor, and my funding agencies, and the many collaborators that have contributed and aided um, to this project.